of the few events in Las Vegas that will get the gamblers off the tables and into the sports pavilion behind the casino is a big fight. And that's what we have here today. Britain's Lloyd Hunnigan is defending his WBC World Welterweight title against Marlon Starling of the United States. Now, Hunnigan's always said that you can't be a big boxing star unless you've topped the bill at Caesars Palace. And that's what he's doing against Marlon Starling, a 30-year-old American who's only ever been stopped once, and that was by an illegal punch. Let's go inside now to the ringside. Marlon Starling, the challenger for the title, the former WBA champion, is in the ring and waiting for Lloyd Hunnigan, the champion, to appear. The music strikes up for Hunnigan, and Lloyd, the WBC World Away champion, is on his way to the ring for, amazingly, his eighth world championship fight in less than two and a half years. The cheer goes up. Hunnigan is on his way, and it's a sullen and composed-looking Hunnigan who makes his way to the ring behind his manager, Mickey Duff. And we have a sellout crowd here in the indoor sports pavilion at Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. An excited crowd. Some 5,000 people jam-packed into the arena. And Hunnigan, 28 years old, two years younger than Starling, enters the ring like a man who knows he's going to work. This is a needle fight. These two men have been insulting each other publicly now for the best part of a year. Anybody could beat Don Curry. You know who beat Don Curry that day? A rag muffin man. The guy is such a big man, and he's always slagging everyone off. He's slagging my trainers off. He's slagging Mickey Duff off. I mean, if he see you, Harry, you know, you're talking to me now, he's slagging you off. <laughs> if Hunnigan wants respect from me, he has to get in the ring. Well, now, sitting with me at the ringside, and I'm delighted to say we have Mike Tyson, the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. I know you're a great fight fan, uh, Mike, of any weight. Tell me how you see this one going. Well, I, I'm, the fight is a contrast of a very experienced fighter against a very determined and hungry fighter. In this particular incident, I, I'm looking at Lloyd Hannigan, and he looks like a guy that just got out of the Bellevue Psychic Ward. And, and I'm looking for some fireworks tonight. Hunnigan's a friend of yours, isn't he? Yeah, he's a very delightful fella, and I enjoy spending time with him the time we hung out and we went to see the OJs. But this is a totally different matter now. I know you regard him as a really tough fighter, don't you? Very tough, very tough and determined. That's what I admire about all fighters. The, the enthusiasm, he has a great deal of enthusiasm. And I believe once the belt starts, he's going to jump on him. Like before, his performance with um, Donald Curry before was more of a reckless you know what I mean? Just, I'm going to take him out now or never. You know, it's now or never. I'm going to take him out. But right now, he's more experienced. He's been in eight world title fights. He's experienced, very confident. He's the best. He's the former undisputed and really still considered the undisputed, um, excuse me, welterweight champion of the world. And his performance proves it. So you're rooting Farnigan. You think he's going to win? Oh, absolutely. My opinion, I'm not good on judging fights. Anything can happen in a pride fight. But from my assumption of the two fellas, I will pick Hunnigan, yes. Okay, Mike, you'll stay with us for the fight, will you? Surely, I can stay a few minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout of the evening is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council. Jose Suleiman, President, Supervisor Aristo Manrique, and the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Dr. Elias Ghanem, and Chairman. The commissioners are Dr. James Knave, Dwayne Ford, Freddie Little, and Jay Nady. The executive director is Chuck Minker. The officials are signed for the next bout of the evening by the governing bodies. The judges are Dalby Shirley of Nevada, Adrian Morgan of Wales, and Ray Solis of Mexico. Your referee is Mills Lane. This is the final event of the night. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing in the red corner, from Hartford, Connecticut, weighing in at 146 pounds, with a professional record of 43 wins, five defeats, one draw, with 26 KOs. He is a former WBA champion and is currently rated third in the world by the WBC. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the challenger, Marlon Starling. And in the blue corner, from London, England, 
weighing 146 and one half pounds. His professional record consists of 33 wins, one defeat, with 22 KOs. He is the reigning WBC welterweight champion of the world, Lloyd Honeygan. And a sizable right, number of right, British now, fans now, wait, in this now, audience minute, here tonight. Wait a minute. Now, wait, wait a minute. Now, both of you protect yourself at all times. We've already gone through the instructions. Any questions from the challenger is Keith Becker. Any questions over here? Let's get it on. Come on. This is a good referee. He's only small. Mills Lane from Reno, Nevada, but he's a good referee. And the Huntington camp were delighted when he was appointed. Huntington, the man with the staring eyes. This is the moment when the talking stops and the fighting begins. Huntington in the black trunks. Straight in. Starling with a reputation for being a clever, cagey fighter. Not always consistent. Took him a long time in his pro. Oh, he's got Hunnigan. Two punches and Hunnigan staggered in the opening minute. And that's a very sharp warning to Lloyd indeed. He popped in two quick punches to the head and Hunnigan was hurt. So the player has been taken away from the champion in the opening seconds. Hunnigan wearing what I think is a replica of his WBC championship belt. The badge emblazoned on the black trunks. And this is not going to go too far by the look of the way these two are going at each other. Hunnigan has turned southpaw. Starling's made a good, confident start here. He's got his gloves high up to his head, protecting himself against the aggressive Hunnigan and putting in good counter punches. Another right hand. This is not a good start by Hunnigan. Starling rocking him all over the place and Hunnigan is in trouble again. First round. This is a sharp, aggressive, and a very meaningful Starling indeed. He's come to get this title, no messing about. Three good punches this time from Hunnigan, another one, beginning to get the range. Come through a bad patch, but warming up. And the way these two are punching, be surprising if it goes halfway through the 12. Well, I don't know about a fight, this has started more like a war. made a good recovery from that bad opening minute and a half and these two are testing each other's courage and resilience to the full here both of them now felt hard punches and Starling comes in with one over the top at the end of the first round that was some first round well Mike some start there. Well, that's a, that's a, a hectic first round, and I give um, the round to Stalin, but Lloyd mustn't let this guy frustrate him, because it's very frustrating when the guy's covered up and he's looking for the knockout, and my best bet is just to punch to the body, because his hand is covered very well, and, and he's very experienced, so it's very easily to fu be frustrated. I hope he's experienced, experienced enough not to let that frustrate him. Suddenly, it's a tough fight for Hannigan. Exactly, because of the fact that he's not calm enough. He must throw it to the body because the body can't move and the gloves are there to protect him. Like I said, he's really very experienced. You know what I mean? And that can frustrate a person. It can frustrate a guy that's a puncher. used to hitting guys and seeing things happen. If nothing's happened because he's hitting on the glove and psychologically he thinks I'm hitting this guy with my best shot, normally he's not hitting him because he's only hitting the glove. Thank you, Mike. Body, 
in the white trunks, the challenger, Marlon Starling, 30 years old, former WBA champion. And Hannigan now, who's going to be put to the test here, and you've heard what Mike Tyson has said. He must work to the body, because the head's protected. Hannigan still working to the head. Oh, he walks right onto a terrific right counter. He's taking too many chances, Hannigan. He's still shooting for the head, and he's wide open as he goes in. Hannigan looks to me like a man who's going for the one-punch win at all costs. <laughs> Starling has come out here knowing exactly what the tactics are going to be, and so far they're very successful. Now he's got his elbows down, protecting the body. Hunnigan can't find a place to shoot at him. Starling already beginning to breathe hard. Hunnigan came into this fight so full of confidence. You wonder how much of it has evaporated already. Still slinging these bombs to the head. He can't really find a clean shot. And Stalin fighting a very clever fight indeed. Putting in good counter punches. And his punches are having more effect than Hunnigan's. Hunnigan trying to batter the arms aside so that he can get at him. And Starling protecting himself very much in the style of the old Sugar Ray Robinson. He's often been compared with Robinson. Robinson was his hero. And he's showing a few of the old Robinson moves there. He even looks facially a little bit like him. Another right on Hunnigan's head. Still Hunnigan comes forward shooting all the time. Well, if he goes out, Hunnigan's going out fighting, that's for sure. It's still only the second round. Starling getting behind the guard into the body. Hunnigan's head wide open as he comes in. What a start to a World Championship fight this is. And another tough round for Hannigan as they break off at the end of the second. He still can't get past those defences, Mike. My, my advice is that if I was fighting, I would keep my hands up, concentrate on using my jab, and concentrate mainly on the body, and trick a punch to the head, sneak a punch right to the head. He's putting a tremendous amount into these opening rounds. I mean, he's using up a lot of energy. I've never seen him fight like this before, um, for some reason. I'm not saying it's in it, too. I've never seen him fight like this. Hopefully, his best bet is to wear um, stalling down, because if the fight goes like this for a long period, either he's going to get a cut because he's getting hit more than he should be getting hit, or else um, he, hopefully he can wear the guy down. He's not going to outbox Starling, that's for sure. Well, no, but his best bet is to wear the guy down, constantly put pressure, and keep a jab in his face. That's why if he jab, he won't jab as much. He has to continue jabbing and working the body. Tremendous WBC World Away Championship fight at Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. This is the city where Mike Tyson will be defending his heavyweight title against Frank Bruno just three weeks from tonight. Hannigan swinging those wild punches again. Not keeping the punches short at all and allowing Starling to measure him as he comes in. Starling keeping his boxing together. And when he opens up, he looks very dangerous. This has not been a vintage Hunnigan performance yet by any means. Scheduled for 12 rounds, this is the third. Hunnigan in his second spell as world champion. 
regained the title from Jorge Vaca last year and defended last summer in Atlantic City against Jung Kil Chung of South Korea and finished it with a punch that was low and the Koreans failed to get up within five minutes so Hannigan was the winner. Well, Starling has uh, thrown some of his best shots and Hannigan's still coming, so maybe we shall get a turn of the tide here eventually. Starling engaged in his 50th professional contest tonight. Hunnigan just trying to blast him apart with sheer non-stop aggression. But so much of his work is being wasted. Another hard, sharp right counter from Starling. Hunnigan now trying to get down to the body. Still taking these little right counters to the head. Hunnigan trying to bully him. Trying to force the defences apart. How much of it... How's he going to keep this up, Hunnigan? It's only the third. And now Starling is beginning to look flash. He's beginning to taunt Hunnigan, and Hunnigan won't like that. Top of the head, but it staggered him. He caught him with a good right. It was on the top of the head, and it hurt. Suddenly was the first real success that Hunnigan had. And as Hunnigan goes back to the corner, he looks very, very tired indeed. But finally got through. Well, it took him three rounds, Mike, but he finally got through. Well, he finally is marked, but for some reason, for some reason, he's punching like he's a little fatigued. I can't imagine, like, the first round, he'd act like he was a little fatigued, and he's coming on. But he had to continue that pressure, you know what I mean? Because he keeps coming in it around and it looked like it might be a long fight but he had to constantly throw that pressure and not stop throwing punches and use the jab do you see any signs that starling might be weakening yeah well he hit him with a good punch and, and when he got hit he, he blushed it off like nothing happened normally when they do that that means something did happen right so how do you feel do you, do you feel hannigan can can pull this out oh definitely hit a puncher a puncher could always push it out okay thank you mike Hunnigan in the black trunks. Three very tough rounds for Hunnigan. Well, it's quite clear that Starling has prepared very carefully for this one. Incidentally, he's got an amazing reach advantage, Starling. His reach is 74 inches, and Hunnigan's alleged to be only 59. All right, all right, all right, get him up. I give you come on. Little apology between the two of them there. A low punch from Stalin. Well, if they hadn't had much uh, respect for each other before this, I think they have now. You can understand how Hannigan could become a very, very effective. He isn't already a very, very popular fighter in the States. He's very much American in his approach. All out ruthlessness. But this is certainly the toughest world title fight he's had so far. Too much in those punches of Hunnigan now. He's just pushing, pushing the, the arms up. Is Starling tiring? That's the key to this. Because there are definite signs that Lloyd is. Two good punches again from Starling. Hurt Hunnigan again. 
Phil Lloyd comes forward. Almost insane determination to press forward. Leaving himself totally exposed to any counter. And again, sharp punches catch Hunnigan to the head. And Hunnigan's quest is beginning to look very, very forlorn indeed. Somehow or other, Hunnigan's got to pull a miracle punch out against a man who's outboxing him. Starling, full of confidence, dictating the tactics, letting Hunnigan wear himself out and providing all the sharp counter punches. Brilliant performance by Starling. And Hunnigan gives him a little tap on the head as they go back. Hunnigan has much to say, well, I do have respect for him. Here's Mickey Dunn. You're lounging, you're lounging, and you're letting him pick you off. You understand? Now, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Listen. Take a deep breath and change, change your attitude, will you? Change your attitude. Just walk out, walk out, and make yourself scared not to get hit. He's making you do all the work. Walk out, make yourself scared, don't get hit. Mickey Duff telling Lloyd Hunnigan he's got to change his attitude. It's no good going in. Absolutely wild. There's got to be a change, a change of tactics, a change of attitude. And Mike Tyson sitting next to me said to me just now, it's no good tapping your opponent on the back when he goes by the corner, you should be hitting him. Round five. And Hunnigan is a bit slow to come out of that corner. They've been doing so much talking, they haven't got his gum shield back in. And the crowd don't like that, he's got another five seconds rest. And so is Starling. I won't say panic in the Hunnigan corner, but uh, a good deal of uh, concern. Now, this is the change of attitude. Hannigan is coming out now to move back and jab. Round five. And no sooner does he do that than Starling does this. All the signs are that that cherished world crown of Hunnigan's is slipping from his head. Excuse this, it'll be quite remarkable. Doing better. Suddenly, Hunnigan putting together more accurate punches, jabbing beautifully into Stalin's head. The Hunnigan attitude has certainly changed for the better. Starling being the clown, that might be a good sign, Barnigan. You would expect Starling to be getting on with his work, having had so much success, not stand around clowning. But it's typical of the man, it's the sort of thing he does do in fights. This is the best round Hunnigan's had so far. Southpaw again. Did that in his previous fight against Chung of South Korea. <laughs> Starling still very much alive and kicking. Now, 
Hunnigan beginning to clown. He takes two on the chin. His gum shield comes out. And the bell has come not a moment too soon, Varnigan. He started to clown, and Starling went straight at him and shot the gum shield straight out of his mouth. Time there, Mike. There was a change of attitude on Lloyd's part, but he looked bad at the end. Lloyd is not fighting to win. For some reason, I, I don't understand it, but he's not fighting to win. And uh, hopefully it doesn't turn out that way, but like I said, I'm a bad judgment of fights when it comes to pick and fight. I can't understand. I'm with you. I don't know why he's come out with all that uh, undisciplined aggression. He doesn't want to fight. He doesn't want to fight like he wants to quit in a way. It looks like he wants to quit. He's letting him. He's allowing him to be hit. And I notice that he only throws punches at the guy's head when the guy's head hands are up. And when the guy hands it down and the guy's bottom board, right now he should throw the left hook. That's when he should have threw the left hook like he's been doing in the earlier rounds. And he's not throwing the punch when he sees the opportunity to throw the punch. Finish that last round in some trouble. Jabba moves, comes the anguish cry from Mickey Duff, his manager. Hannigan doesn't really know what to do. I think his mind is totally confused now. He doesn't quite know how to handle Starling. Nothing's worked. And he's trying to feel his way into a new attitude and he can't do it. And Starling senses victory. Starling again and again. Hannigan has to take these punches. He's being made to suffer. Hannigan's face now swollen around the eyes. Somehow Lloyd has got to survive these middle rounds. Hope that Starling tires and then try to catch up with him towards the finish. It looks to be the only hope now. If he'd started like that, instead of leaving it till now, it might all have been different. Starling maneuvering, trying to get Hannigan into a corner where he can get him again. Hannigan now turning the cagey boxer. And certainly it's considerably more successful than the undisciplined aggression of earlier on. But the left catches him. And again, the gum shield flies out of Hunnigan's mouth and it's wound up in the third row of the press seats. And Hunnigan is beginning to look a dejected fighter. And it looks very much as though Starling is going to pull off an upset here. That Starling corner must be very, very pleased with what's happened. Here's Eddie Futch, the trainer. As long as he's moving, jab, jab, cut him off. Let him in the shot. Got tape problems here. Well, Hunnigan came into this fight as a five to two on favorite. Here's replay from that sixth round. And in every round so far, there's been a nasty shock for Hannigan, and there was another one. See that gum shield flying out? It wound up in row three. So, even the retreating tactics have not really worked. Mike Tyson's left us now to go and join somebody else on the other side of the ring.
Hannigan, his eighth world championship fight, his 35th pro fight, his first pro fight in December 1980 at the Royal Albert Hall. Mike Sullivan win the distance with him that night over six rounds, so Sullivan can be proud of that performance, considering what's come since. The, the gum shield's out of uh, Starling's mouth this time. The referee tosses it to a neutral corner. So this time, Starling, the challenger, is without the gum shield. Starling in white trunks, coming forward all the time, trying to cut Hunnigan off. And Hunnigan, not knowing where to go now, not punching, just running. Trying to work behind a jab, but he's running backwards and they're beginning to boo him. What a remarkable turnaround this uh, has been for Hunnigan. He started like a demon, like a man demented, in fact. And now he's trying to turn into a cagey boxer. Nothing seems to work. Hunnigan's gum shoot has gone as well now. Neither man has got one in. Round seven of a hard fight between two men who don't like each other, but maybe grudgingly now beginning to respect each other. Starling says, come forward. Mickey Duff, just to my left here, says, never mind about that, stick to the tactics. making Starling chase, trying to take the strength out of those 30-year-old legs. But will it work? <laughs> Hannigan very swollen around the right eye now, the lips are puffed. Neither man has the gum shield in. Oh! He's hurt. Well, it looked to me as though he was hurt, but maybe it was just a slip. In the neutral, uh, in the Starling corner. Maybe there was water there. I thought he was hurt for a minute, the way he went down, but apparently not. So now they go to work on that swelling, which is getting worse and worse on Hannigan's right eye. Using that flat iron to try to iron out the bump. Lloyd, Lloyd. You're way behind now, you've got to start getting into the fight. You won't get in the fight by letting him walk all over you. You've got to stay your ground and make him miss, but not brawl with him. Make him miss and stick a jab and then try and back him up. Well, Mickey Duff trying to talk new tactics. You okay? In Darnigan. You're not tired? No, no. No, good. Then go says work. he's not tired. Well, come on, go and work. All right. He's a man of extreme resilience if he isn't tired at this stage. It's the eighth. As you heard Mickey Duff say. Hannigan a long, long way behind. In fact, he's hardly won a run. Maybe one. Starling going for the finish. And he might get it. Hannigan all over the place. Totally bemused. He's fought one of the worst fights of his life here tonight. Nothing's ever gone right for him from the opening bell. He walked into punches right at the start. And he's walking in, well, he's not walking into him, he's backing into him now. And Starling's got him trapped there. And he may not let him go now. The gum shield comes out of Hannigan's mouth and I think he's going. I think the end is very near for Britain's world welterweight champion.
He can't come off the ropes. He doesn't know where to go. The head's beginning to hang. The arms are coming down. He's making a gallant effort to keep this crown. But relentlessly, Starling is knocking it off his head. Still, Starling hasn't quite finished him. Hannigan gets another reprieve. won the WBA title from Mark Breland. He started slowly and then came strong at the finish. Here, he started very fast and strong. And now in the eighth, he's still going very, very strongly indeed. Unmarked. Hannigan very much marked. The right side of his face now beginning to swell, as well as the eye. The cheeks beginning to puff out. He's got some bad trouble, Hannigan, with his right cheek. Rather reminiscent of something that happened to Muhammad Ali many, many years ago against Joe Frazier. The right side of his face now beginning to puff out, almost as though he may have a broken jaw. There's trouble there. There's concern. They're asking about his jaw. The doctor's coming to have a look. This might be the end. The bruise, I just squeezed it. The bruise. That's a bad swelling by the on the right side of his face, on the cheek. Open your jaw. Okay. That's the doctor talking to him now. You want to go back out there, son? Yes, yeah, yeah. sure. Ready to fight? Huh? Can you go on? Yeah, just there, doctor. Yeah, yeah, so tape on that. Jaw's okay. Tape on that left. Your jaw's okay. Tape, we're saying. Yeah, you're all right. Hannigan protesting. Hannigan protesting furiously that his jaw is okay. But it clearly isn't. However, he's not giving the crown up lightly. Now then, how far can he get with this additional handicap? The right side of his face, quite grotesquely swollen now. Starling in the white trunks. The man who's come to take the crown and looks like doing just that. Two came into the ring, sworn enemies. It's been that sort of fight too. But I don't think there'll be too much enmity at the end of this. Hunnigan's already shown his respect for Starling by patting him on the head. And Hunnigan goes down out of exhaustion and despair, I think, as much as anything. He looks at the timekeeper. He's got enough sense to do that. His nose bleeding, badly hurt. Are you okay, says Mills Lane? the referee and on he goes again the ninth another sucking great right hand from starting and one's beginning to hope that this won't go too much further because Hunnigan is taking too much and it's stopped quite rightly and America gets to its feet at Caesars Palace and acclaims the new champion Marlon Starling from Hartford Connecticut and a well-deserved champion at that he took command of the fight in the opening round and he kept it all the way through. There was nothing that the unfortunate Hunnigan could do about it. Right eye swollen, right cheek swelling out, nose not broken but badly hurt. Hunnigan is a despairing and dejected figure in his corner and so in his eighth world championship fight Hunnigan loses the title for the second time. He lost it on a technical decision to Jorge Vaca, then got it back, and now he loses it again. These were the closing moments. 
Hunnigan in hopeless trouble. And I'm not sure he was punched down. I think it was just sheer frustration and exhaustion that finally brought him to his knees. And then another blistering attack from Starling. And Mills Lane, the referee, moved mercifully in and called a halt. Just about at the right time. Hunnigan was taking far, far too much. So, Britain's champion on his knees at Caesars Palace. The title gone. And all the talk of a unification title fight between Hunnigan and the winner of the Breland Lee fight. All past history now. It doesn't matter anymore as far as Hunnigan's concerned. Starling is the new WBC welterweight champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, one minute, 19 seconds of the ninth round. Referee Mills Lane stops the bout. The winner by a TKO and new WBC welterweight champion of the world, Marlon, the magic man, Starling. Do you feel okay? I feel fine now, you know. He just at my um, yeah. my face swelled up a little bit at the side, and um, every time he he caught me on it, like the swelling, you feel like someone's cutting me with a knife, you know. It wasn't your night tonight, was it? It was a bad start. <laughs> yeah, it was a bad start. I got caught early, and I just couldn't get into the fight, Harry. And he just I wish the guy luck, you know. I just wish he didn't talk so much, but I wish him luck. The first five rounds, I mean, you threw everything in. It was a bit undisciplined. I mean, you were trying ruthlessly to get at him, and he was so well protected. Yeah, I let my, I let my aggression get the better of me, Harry. I wanted to beat the guys so, so much, and I, I wasn't thinking tonight, and I, I let my aggression get the better of me. So you tried, to, you did change the tactics. You began to go back. I try, Harry. I try everything, you know, try to make him make mistakes, and then let him pay. But um, it was too late. So a little bit of respect for Starling? Um, as a fighter, yeah, but not as a man, because you, you don't act like a man, you act like a kid, you know? I don't want to keep you too long, because you're not in a good state, but <laughs> what, what's the future now, do you think? I don't know, Harry, I can't, I, off my hand right now, I can't really, I can't really say. Oh, wait, bad luck tonight, man. you put up a terrific fight, yeah, you went down fighting. Well, you know, you know it's British, huh? We'll have to give it our own, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I hope to see you back in the ring anyway. Can I quit with Mickey? Yeah, sure. What do you feel about it, Mick? Well, uh, naturally, I'm disappointed. I, I'm proud that he fought his heart out. Uh, he caught a good Starling. He also, in my opinion, we kept telling him, play cool, the game is not to get hit. But he had so much venom, he wanted to get it. And he got hit with one or two punches, and the guy took the fight away from him. You've got to give him all the credit. Well, he came back once. Can he come back again? Yeah, oh, sure. I think he may. He may well come back. Well, we all hope so. Thanks very much, both of you. All right. Marlon, this interview is going to Great Britain, and we, on behalf of that country, I want to congratulate you. You put up a tremendous fight. Thanks. Uh, I told you that I was the best welterweight in the world, and I think it, you know I proved it. You came out with the right tactics. You uh, defended well. You let him wear himself out. Everything went right. Everything went right. Uh, I know Lloyd haven't have, had a fight like a, a Marlon Sterling. Um, you know, we got this fight out of the way. I'm happy I got this fight, and you know, I am now to me the undisputed welterweight champ of the world. Would you regard that as one of your best ever performances tonight? You have to take that with my, my trainer here, Eddie Fudge. He, he can tell you I'm never happy with Marlon Stone, so let's, let, let Eddie can talk to you about that. Were you ever in any trouble in that fight? Never. You know, you, you have to respect every guy's power because it only takes one shot. How do you feel about Heineken now? Do you respect him as a fighter? I always respect him as a fighter, but as, a, as the best welterweight in the world, you know what I'm going to tell you? Okay. <laughs> Marlon, thank you very much. Let me have a word with Eddie Fudge. That was a great performance by your man. Uh, he, he carried out our, our plan. Uh, we knew that Hunnigan would come out fast and throw a lot of punches. And uh, Marlon has a good defense. I knew that uh, eventually Hunnigan would slow up and Marlon, Marlon would take over. You read Hunnigan very well. You knew exactly how he would come out. Right. You were right. 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 Did the change of tactics, did Hunnigan's change of tactics worry you at all? Did you think it might work? Uh, no. When he changed tactics, we knew it was, it was in desperation. See, and so we just we just uh, stepped up our pressure, and it paid off. 
It's a great performance at 30 years old by Marlon, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think we all respect him. A great fight, great win. Oh, thank you.